Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing another experiment on NHL 23. We're going to put Kale McCarr as a forward on the Colorado Avalanche to see how he performs. I'm genuinely quite curious as to how this is going to turn out because I've seen him put up point a game as a defenseman before. Multiple times actually, I want to say. So I'm interested to see if he is going to exceed that or if he'll still put up roughly the same amount of points. I'm also going to simulate the first season five times so that we can try to check out if there's any variance or if he's a consistent king. I did move him to forward on the power play. I don't think that's really going to make much of a difference because there are forwards that play defense on the power play. I'm mostly concerned with this five on five Kale McCarr forward action. But yeah, I just moved him over here. It doesn't really make much of a difference. And a plus five. That is dirty. Although Rantanen is listed as a right winger, shoots left and Kale McCarr shoots right. So I just decided, hey, gonna move him over there. I'm curious to see what you guys think before we actually simulate as well. Do you think he's gonna outperform his defensive self or do you think that he'll probably do about the same? There's only one way to find out so let's go ahead and simulate the season for the first time to see how Kale McCarr will do on a line with Rantanen and Nate Mack. Although it seems unlikely I'm wondering if he could impact Nate Mack and Rantanen's output. He is 94 overall offensive defenseman I think that they should do outstanding together but you never know. It is NHL 23. Strictly because he's listed as a defenseman, maybe they will do awful. I have no idea, but we are going to find out very soon. I mean, the team itself is doing very well. 35 wins, 36. I stand corrected. They just shut out the Oilers. Ooh, look at them go. Little winning streak here. This is one of those rare occurrences that I skip over the trade deadline because it has literally no effect on the video whatsoever. We're not making any moves. The team is staying just the way it is. I just want to see... How Kale McCarr does as a forward. Colorado finished first in the Central Division by quite a bit. They were 10 points up on the Smashville Predators, who were number two. Where'd they finish in the league? It's got to be a top five. No? Am I? Okay, there they are. Top three. Yeah, I was going to say, that's kind of outrageous. Interesting. So Nate Mack put up 85 points. We got 77 from Kale and 75 from Rantanen. So I've seen him put up 82 as a defenseman before. I mean, I've also seen him put up 50 and 60 as a defenseman. But I'm just saying that at his peak, I have seen him get point a game plus as a defenseman and here as a forward he only put up 77 and if you look at his previous seasons he put up 86 in 77 last year 44 exactly point a game in the 2020-21 season and the year before that 50 and 57 so interesting game winning goals wasn't really affected somehow power play points was affected but that could just be simulation versus real life stats. Ice time went down by quite a bit, actually. That's a pretty big margin. I know it doesn't seem that big, but when you really think about it, you know, three minutes a game, add that up throughout the whole year, that is quite a bit. Okay, well, let's run it back and see how Kale does the second time around. I'm only gonna do this for the second season just to make sure that it loads up at the right part, but yeah, he's on the first line with Mac and Rantanen. We should be all good. I got so caught up looking at the stats that I forgot to do the playoff simulation in year one. That's amazing. Classic. It wouldn't be a true Man of the Rip video without me doing something absolutely ridiculous. So we can check that off the list and we are on our way. Thankfully, in this case, it's not that important. I know some people probably wanted to see who wins the Stanley Cup and if Kale ends up winning the Stanley Cup, but I'm not really interested so much in that. I just want to see throughout the season, with Kale as a forward, how many points is he going to put up? There is the chance that he lights it up in the playoffs, you know, gets 30 points in... What's the least amount of games you could play? 16. They just do pure sweeps. The ads are doing well this season, but they are not doing as well as last season. Oh, I didn't get any trade alerts last time. Joe Pavelski and Faxa going with a third... To, oh, I read that so wrong. But anyway, yeah, that's a pretty big blockbuster trade, I would say. So far, they are having a much better, never mind, post-trade deadline than last season. But as I was saying that, they went on a four-game losing streak. So that's always fun. But they are certainly not going to reach the 50... 3, 52 wins they had last season. I already forget. Year number two was a second place central finish with 100 points flat. And they had 47 Ws in the entire league. They would finish sixth. So they still did well. Nate actually had one less point than last year. But Kale McCarr went up from 77 to 83. He is above point a game this season. 
and Rantanen had 81. So these guys were all neck and neck throughout the year, clearly. All right, let's head to year three. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. It's playoff time. Let's do it. Oh, could it be a first round exit? Yes, it is at the hands of the Winnipeg Jets. That's what would have happened in the other one, by the way. So spoiler alert, the Maple Leafs go on to win the Stanley Cup in this simulation. And let's see how many points Kiel McCarr had in seven playoff games. Nate Mack had nine. And if we go over to the player stats, we should be able to see nice he had nine so he was right there with nate awarded to the defenseman who demonstrates throughout the season the greatest yeah so this is kind of cheating but i feel like the game does not recognize that we put him at forward it's just like hey his position says rd so he's obviously a defenseman he should theoretically win that every year i feel like you know playing forward with rantanen and nate mack i would put up points so now i'm curious to see if he doesn't win that trophy at any point today's the day after american thanksgiving so there is hockey on during the day and i am hyped for it it was football all day yesterday today it's all hockey let's go i'm actually up against tactics this week in fantasy hockey and it is a very close race i mean I've had some stellar performances. Everyone laughed at me when I took Karel Vimelka. Guy is a legend. I really do need Ehlers, Nichushkin, and it wouldn't hurt to have Verona back as well. I've had a lot of injuries recently. Tara Vinen's out for a while. Shabbat had a concussion, so he should be back somewhat soon. The Avs are on a fairly similar pace to the year one sim. I think they're a little bit ahead of year two, but let's see how the post-trade deadline goes, and if they will, reach 50 wins yet again how many is that one two three four five six losses in a row classic i thought for a second they weren't going to make the playoffs when i show you guys this you're going to be blown away i am shocked they made it in but kale mccarr 85 points boy. a 92 point fifth placed finish for the colorado avalanche in the third year simulation 13th in the league so it does make sense but now that begs the question, did someone who should not be in the playoffs at all make it? No, apparently not. So Kale led the team this year, 85 points. We got 83 from Ranton and Nate Mack was third. So these guys always finish relatively close to one another, which definitely makes sense because they are line mates. Plus 33 with 16 pims, a 13.2 shooting percentage. Only three game winning goals this year. Will they surpass the round one curse? They're off to a great start here and they do. They make it to round number two against the, uh-oh, not the winner. Winnipeg Jets. It is already heavily in fate. A sweep! They swept them! I think it's pretty safe to say that the Jets are Colorado's kryptonite at this point. Our boy also led the playoffs for the Colorado Avalanche, having 10 points in nine games. And on top of that, let's go ahead and look here. Yeah, the James Norris goes to Kale McCarr. No shocker. Unless you are surprised by that somehow. In which case, I don't know where your head's at. So far, we've seen pretty consistent results. In fact, it's been going up incrementally. So let's see if Kale McCarr will once again top the previous season or if this will be the first season that he does not do that. First in the division at the moment, but definitely not far ahead. It is a close race. Although Kale has been having incrementally more successful seasons, I feel like the team has been going downhill. Actually, they have because they had 107 points and then they had... 100 points and then last year they had what 92 so they are getting incrementally worse as he gets incrementally better very weird still definitely did not top the first season but i love how they beat arizona 11 to 1 and then two days later proceeded to lose 5-3 that's hockey baby the central was just weaker this year because they put up 92 points and finished second instead of what was it fifth last time but i mean look how close this was it is a one point separation between two and five. 12th in the league, the 13th placed Florida Panthers get snubbed. You hate to see it. And in an interesting turn of events, Gabriel Landeskog on the second line leads the team with 83 points. Makara McKinnon both put up 80, and Miko only puts up 71. Sydney the Kidney broke 100 this year, so there are players getting a lot of points. It's just not that line for some reason. It's about that time again. Let's see if a first round exit will come at the hands of the Chicago Blackhawks or if Colorado sweeps them. Just tell me we're not going up against the Jets and we're mint. Here we go. The Oilers. Oh, yeah. Great effort. Wonderful effort. No. Oh, my word. That was terrifying. But did make it to the Stanley Cup finals against the Carolina Hurricanes and a sweep in the finals. 
Who knew that 43 wins was the sweet spot? Rantanen really woke up for the playoffs. Landy was just there again. 25, what a stud muffin. And then we got 22 from Nate and 21 from Kale, who interestingly only put up four more points than Gerard, who is an 86 overall defenseman actually playing defense. So that is worth noting. Final season. Don't disappoint us, Kale. His first 90-point season as a forward. You heard it here first. Just wait. It's gonna happen. Yep. In typical fashion, the Winnipeg Jets take us down. And that is right before a losing streak. But it is early, and we are dominating the division at the moment. It's out of control. This might be the best season yet. They're on pace for it anyway. Yeah, the trade deadline's all the way down there, and I think at about the time we played Edmonton in the first year, they were at 36 wins. So let's see if they can top that. And they do! Holy crap! This is quite the year. This could be a President's Trophy year if they keep it up. That is, however, a big if. And we have to take into account the post-trade deadline collapse. The inevitable post-trade deadline collapse, might I add. Yep. The Winnipeg Jets now in a big lead. And of course, they take us down again. But a 50-win season still, so it's still a very good one. The Jets finished with 54 Ws and 115 points. Colorado second in the Central with 50 Dubs, 108. And in the entire league, Colorado finished third. And the Jets, yeah, yeah of course they do. What is with them in this video? Nate Mack back on top with 87 points. Makar puts up 82, and then Rantanen only put up 64 this year. This really does show you how much the simulation engine can vary with nothing really changing. You know, I'm starting the same year over and over again. The final playoff run, can Colorado take home back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, or will they be sent home empty-handed? Oh no, it's the Jets. It's the Jets! Yes? Game seven? Oh my word, they did it. We have to win the Stanley Cup now. There's no way we lose. Absolutely no shot. I thought we lost. <laughs> I thought we lost, but no. We have the Colorado... No, we don't. We have the Carolina Hurricanes. That was close. And they do win it again. I'm exceptionally tired today, so I'm going to blame that for my absolute inability to speak right now. Even though it happens every video, I feel like this one is extra bad. And what a playoff run it was. 33 points in 24 games. That's a way to finish off the simulation. boy, Kale. Of course, he gets another James Norris. It would be shocking if he didn't. And yeah, there you go. The Colorado Avalanche with Kale McCarr as a forward. That's what would happen. I feel like he definitely put up more points than he typically does as a defenseman. But there was no special season where he put up like 90 plus that I feel like he never would have as a defenseman. So basically I just feel like he put up his peak season defense numbers, but consistently. And I'm just going compared to what, you know, I've seen seasons in NHL 23. Obviously not real life because he is absolutely unreal in real life. So yes, according to EA Sports on National Hockey League 23, that's what would happen if Kale McCarr was a forward. I would like to dispute it, but Facts are facts. Thank you for the suggestion. And on that note, guys, I'll see you soon.